Yo guys, what's going on? It's Shauno here and today I'm bringing you a guide on the best in slot gear, the Prebis, all of the best talents and runes. Now we know that all the gear that is available, I've done all the simulations to work out what is the actual best in slot and what is really good for the Prebis. It's a little bit different from the guide I did before, but with the guide I did before, we hadn't properly done the raids yet. We hadn't seen all of the gear available. So now this is the best in slot gear. Before I start, I just want to give a shout out to everyone who came to the live stream last night for the Sunken Temple raid. It was a really good stream and it was good to see so many of you in the chat. And I really, really enjoyed that. That was one of the first really successful live streams so thank you so much to everyone especially those that helped with the new mechanics so first what we're going to do is we're going to look at the talents so these are the best talents for the sunken temple raid from what i've seen these are the ones you want to use now it's the talents are very similar to my last guide you're using five out of five impact five out of five ignite now i'm choosing to use two in two of flame throwing I found that this is very very good on quite a lot of the mechanics it helps to improve dps because you can stay further away you can avoid more mechanics and with things like the second boss you can blink back and do a lot more damage without having to kite too much so i found it really useful but if you are going for speed running or something like that then you will want to take pyroblast for blast wave blast wave is super super good when you're doing trash uh, the AOE is huge, especially with the crit modifiers. But there we go. So those are the options really for there. If you're focusing more on boss kills and passing, I would go for flame throwing. If you just want to speed through and you want to help with the trash, go for blast wave. Then we've got two in incinerate, two in burning soul, three in improved scorch, three in master of elements, three in critical mass, five in firepower, one in combustion, then we've got the elemental precision, frost warding, and the ice shards. The ice shards is very, very important for this build because we're using frost firebolt. So these are hard lock talents. The only really option, like I said, you can take flame throwing or you can take pyro and blast wave combination. Any other talents are not worth taking. For the headroom, we're actually using this temporal anomaly. I don't know how to say it exactly, but it provides a shield for the raid. It's actually the best one before I said about using advanced warding. But the difference is this, you can actually throw out, there's a few bosses where they do a lot of AOE damage. You can just throw one, one of these out with a spare global and it's gonna help the whole raid. It's gonna help your healers because of their shield going up. It's just a really, really good talent. I know it got nerfed a little bit, but it's still good to take. If every mage takes this, then it's gonna help our healers a lot. For the chest, obviously we're using burnout. For the wrist, it's Molten Armor. There is a chance to use Bellfire Bolt on the first boss. I actually tested it yesterday, but it didn't do as much damage as it should. I don't know if the script in the simulation is incorrect or whether it's still bugged within the game, but it's not performing as it should be. So we're taking Molten Armor. For the hand room, we're using Living Bomb. For the waist room, it's Frost Fire Bolt. For the legs, we're using Icy Veins, but you can swap this out if you choose. You can use Living Flame for the trash. Just have Icy Veins ready for the boss. For the foot rune, we're using Spell Power. So those are the hard lock talents. If you have any questions on these or anything, just write in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Now I'm gonna start with the pre-bis gear. For the head, we're using the tailoring helm from the last phase. If you don't have this for some reason, then your best option is to use the emerald head or the blood guards head if you are rank seven. If you're very, very rich and you've got the eye of flame, then use that. Otherwise, the on use on the tailoring helm is very, very good. So even if you have some of these better options, you should use the tailoring helm whilst you have the cooldown for it. For the neck, it's the piston pinned it. We'll get this mage quest neck, which is the bis neck, is very, very easy to do. Just run with the piston if you have it. If not, the Jagged Bone Necklace, if you can get it. If not, then the Ghost Shards Talisman. But to be honest, even if you don't have any of these, just get any neck that you can get. Just a green one, it doesn't matter. Like I said, after one raid, you're gonna replace it anyway. For the shoulders, we're using the Blood Guards Dreadweave Mantle, if you're rank seven. If you're not rank seven, the Emerald one is very, very similar. 
that's fine just use the emerald one now before we were saying about the kentic amis or the rock grip mantle but actually with the one percent crit on this it works out slightly slightly better so just use this one until you can make your fractured mind pauldrons for the cloak we're using the cinder cloth cloak should be fairly easy to get it's uh, 8 intellect and 13 fire damage. For the chest, it's the iridated robe set. Again, if you don't have this, let's say you're a new character, you didn't do phase 2, just get the emerald ones. Just farm honored reputation, it's not too hard. Get the emerald enchanted robes. For the wrists, it's the Warsong Gulch braces. If not, you can get these from Nomragun. Otherwise, just get the highest fiery wrath braces you can get. Now for the weapon. This weapon from Mara, from Princess, is the Biss. This is the best in slot, regardless. If you have this, it's the best. But, as you can see, it's a 0.1% chance. I kid you not, I have been and killed Princess solo over 100 times. I haven't seen it. So, obviously, it's on the list because it is the best, but you're probably never going to see it. So, in which case, you can get the Inventor's Focal Sword from tinker in mara that should be an easier grind one percent crit 11 spell damage otherwise you've got the glimmering gizmo blade between these three you should have one of these or the offhand it's the personal spell book this is part of one of your runes anyway so you'll get this regardless just go and get it 21 spell power it's really nice now for the hands we have the fiery wrath hands Fiery Wrath hands are very, very good. If for some reason you can't get hold of them or you don't have the money, like I said, go for the Emerald ones or the Cindercloth ones. But the best is actually these 26 fire damage gloves. Or the belt. This is the Biss belt. 26 fire damage belt. But it's very, very expensive to buy. There's one in my auction house right now and it's up for 1,200 gold. Am I going to spend that? No, I'm not. So the next best is the Defiler's Cloth Girdle. It's 9 spell damage, but it's 1% crit. Now I'll speak quickly on crit versus spell damage. I've run quite a few simulations on this. And from my findings, I can say that 1% crit equals around 9 spell power. So what that means is, if an item has 8 spell power, and you compare it to 1% crit, then 1% crit is better. If an item has 10 spell power, that's better than the 1% crit item. I hope that makes sense. If not, leave a comment. I'll try and explain it a little bit better. But basically, 1% crit is equal to around 9 spell damage. So this would be around 18, 19 spell damage, while the Belt of Fiery Wrath would give 26 fire damage. For the legs, again, we're just using fiery wrath legs 36 fire damage is pretty huge if you can afford them or get hold of them otherwise honestly it's pre-bis so just get the emerald ones in pre-bis it's not going to matter too much for the boots it's the irradiated boots if not you can get these in mara which is 12 intellect 14 spell damage or you can just get the cinder cloth these are the boots that i use 21 fire damage is very very nice it will be the bis until you can get the set boots or the rings We've got the Ember Blood Blood Seal. Most of us have this, so we'll just use it from phase two. Otherwise, the Band of Boiling Blood is the new ring. It's ever so slightly better because it's got one more spell damage. But it's really confusing because if you don't want to farm this, that's absolutely fine because it's one spell damage more. The other ring you can get from Blackrock Depths. Otherwise, just use the Advisor's Ring. If I'm perfectly honest with you, I use the Advisor's Ring because I'm lazy. But if you want to farm this one, go for it. For the trinkets, we've got the miniaturized combustion chamber and the void pearl. If you can't get these, you've got breadth of the beast. Gives you 1% crit. Like I said, that equals to around 9 spell power. So it's ever so slightly behind the void pearl. But if you don't have the combustion chamber, get the beast. Otherwise, you'll have to use something like a rune of perfection. But I'm assuming that you would have the void pearl by now. For the wand, we're using this one from Black Rock Depths. It's 13 fire damage. It's pretty nice. So that's the pre bis gear. Like I said, it's not that important. If you can't get something because it costs too much gold or you don't have the reputation, just use whatever you can and we'll replace it very quickly. Now we're going to look at the bis gear. 
For the head, it's the Eye of Flame, but like I said, it's very, very expensive. You'll probably never get this. So in which case, we've got this, the Hakari Shroud. Now this starts from a quest in Feralas called Sunken Temple. It will send you off to Tanaris. You'll do a few little quests. It will eventually send you into the raid where you can get this item. Now, one thing I will say about this is technically it's the second best in slot. That said, if you have the tailoring helm, when the tailoring helm cooldown is available, it actually sims higher than the Hakari Shroud. So unless the fight is very, very long, then the Hakari Shroud is better. But on a short fight, you would use the tailoring helm. Even though it's less spell power, the on use is just so good. You will likely use this tailoring helm unless you've got the Eye of Flame, but you can pick this one up. If the tailoring helm is on cooldown, you can use the Hakari Shroud. For the neck, we've got the Arcane Crystal Pendant. This is a quest that starts at your Mage Trainer. Go and get it, then you'll do some things in Ashara. Eventually, you'll have to kill more fast in the raid, then you'll get this. It's very good, it's very easy to get. The shoulders is the Fractured Mind Pauldrons. This is a little bit of a long quest to get, but it's a lot better than the phase two one I found. You get it done a lot quicker and it's a lot cheaper now because the seeds that are dropping in the raid, there's loads of them. So everyone will get this very quickly. For the cloak, we're using the Aku's Hex Cape. It drops from Gasha, 10 intellects, 15 spell damage. For the chest, we're using the set chest. You'll want to always use the set chest. This one, like I said, is 23 spell damage, 1% crit. That equates to sort of 32 spell damage. It's very strong and the set bonus is very good as well. For the wrist, we're using the Watson Gold Tracers. But again, if you don't have the reputation, just use the best Fiery Wrath ones you can get. Now, for the weapon, Blade of Eternal Darkness is the Biss. But like I said in the pre -bis, it's very, very, very hard to get. I would not put that on you. The mental health, it, it just it's just not good to farm this for too long. Do it if you have some time here and there, but don't dedicate your life to it because you will end up a degenerate. Instead, we've got two options here. Now, technically, the best in slot is the Modus Kakan. It's 23 fire damage, but the Hubris is very, very good as well. It's about one point different because you've got the intellect on here. That said, if you're planning to do Arcane or Frost or something, use it for PvP specs, then the Hubris is better. But if you just PvE and you can't get the Blade of Eternal Darkness, Modus Kakan is good. There'll probably be less competition on this because Warlocks will always go for the Hubris, whereas we are the only ones that are using all fire spells. So you should be able to get this. For the offhand is the Drake Stone of the Blood Prophet, but good luck getting this one. So just keep the personal spell book if you need. Your healers might want this. But if you get it, fair play. For the hands, it's the Hexer's Gloves. 16 intellect and 19 spell damage. Very nice gloves. For the belt, as we've covered in the pre section, the Fiery Wrath belt with 26 fire damage is the best in slot. You've got the 24 fire damage option as well. But it's very, very similar to the Defiler's Gloth Girdle. So if you don't have the gold or you can't find one, just get this Defiler's Gloth Girdle. It's 1% crit and 9 spell damage. But the true Biss is the 26 fire damage belt. It would be a fool of me to say that it's not because it is. But like I said, it's very, very expensive to buy. For the legs, we want the set legs. The set bonus is too good. Crit chance is nice in the set bonus as well. For the feet, it's the same. The boots, we've got a very nice 15 spell damage on there, 1% crit. And obviously your damage spells have a chance to your target to take up to 50 increased damage. So for the rings, you want the Band of Boiling Blood and the Drake Claw Band of the Harbringer. These are the best combination. I've tested it so many times. That said, if you don't have this, then Roar of the Dream is the third best option. You can get this from being exalted in the new incursions reputation. Your harmful spells have a chance to increase your spell damage by 66 for 10 seconds. On paper, it's very, very good. But from the tests that I've done on every single sim, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, 120 seconds, five minute fight, 
I've tested them all and the Roar of Dream is ever so slightly behind the Drake Claw Band of the Harbinger. So these three rings are sort of your best in any combination that you want to do it. If you can't get the Drake Claw Band, then get the Roar of the Dream. Any of these, like I said, is going to be the best. The trinkets, we've got the Miniaturized Combustion Chamber from Noma in the last phase and the Atali Blood Ritual Charm. This is an on-use clicky. We love this because we're going to pop it with combustion and icy veins. It increases your spell damage by up to 96 or 20 seconds. Every time you cast a spell, the bonus is reduced by 8. Now this is great because we'll just use longer casted spells like Frost Firebolt. It's going to scale really well. It lasts 20 seconds. So it's very good for nuking. So these are the best combination for the wand we've got the fire damage wand with 19 fire damage good luck finding this it's extremely rare and it's going to be very very expensive otherwise you can get the 17 fire damage wand but again people are just going to put it on the auction house for an insane price so you can just get the pyric one from blackrock depths it's 13 fire damage but hey if you've got money to burn or you come across this then use it so that's the actual best in slot gear and the pre -bis. There's no other alternatives. This is the best. I'll leave these links for the pre and the BIS in the description below. If you have any questions or anything, just write in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great day.